All right. Yo, what up, Earth? It's 929 WDUP, New London's home of time. It's hip hop and RB. Got a special guest checking in. My dog, Paul Body Kiyati, man. What's going hey. on, man? Thanks for checking in, bro. Hey, man, much love, brother. Fan of the show. Thank you for taking some time to stop and chop it up with me. Uh, excited to be yeah. uh, spending some time with your listeners, brother. Yeah, absolutely, man. Likewise, man. My man live right now in Houston, man. 93.7 to beat live, you know what I mean, on 929 as well, you know what I mean? Salute. You for taking time out to deal with us, man. So, yo, let's talk about these records, man. The Diamonds and Designer record and the story record and, you know what I mean, your upcoming project. Yeah, for sure. So, man, we just recently released Grown Man Music. Uh, for me, man, I'm a grown man. Uh, man, my music background, you know, it goes back. And for me, I just wanted to create some music for people that were in my lane in life. Like, for me, I got a wife. I have kids. I own businesses. Uh, I'm one of the top radio personalities in the country. Uh, 37 cities. I work with the Houston Rockets, the Houston Sabercats. I do a lot. So for me, I don't necessarily want to ride around and jam music about shooting the block up, how many yeah. times we hit up the ops. You know, for me, it's about, hey, man, how do we put out messaging that, you know, having a wife and kids are cool. Like, that's what I really am passionate about. How do I feed the streets? How do I be sure we help break new music? Those are things that I'm passionate about. So this grown man music, I really didn't use any big national features. I mean, shout out to all my homeboys, the Kevin Gates and the all those. I didn't use any of that. Mm -hmm. I literally used artists that I met doing my online review where we listen to people's music or if they did a showcase. My whole album is full of artists that I met via Instagram or vet, Facebook Live or YouTube Live that I felt had talent. I took them and gave them the opportunity to get on my album with me. So even Trials, who's on the story, uh, Diamonds and Designer, that's me that's singing and rapping the whole song. Uh, Neek, she's super talented. Uh, Chris, the front runners. Man, this whole project is full of artists that are independent artists that are jamming. And for me, that's all I was looking for with this grown man music. Yeah, so um, what came first, the music or the radio? Ah, trick question. That's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. Well, actually, uh, music came first. I, I started my career battle rapping, and that's how I got into it. So, like, BET 106 in part, uh, Freestyle Friday. I won four or five that? weeks in a row. Yeah, for sure. Oh, uh, I got to look that up on YouTube. It's still available sure. on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, it might pop ah, up. Good. Uh, I got to take that. Uh, source unsigned hype. Like, like, in Houston, people knew that freestyling, I was a problem. And so that's really how I got started. Whenever I finally signed a record deal, it may have been... 2003 or something like that, I don't know. And it just yeah. went bad for me. And so for me, I stepped away from the music and radio opened the door. It, it really freestyling got me my job at radio. A lot of people don't know that. A mm. group didn't show up for a concert. It's a station called Party 104.9 by Univision. And they were like, well, what are we going to do for 10 minutes? As a joke, somebody said, let Kiati go freestyle. So I ended up going out freestyling. It was about 7,000 people on the beach. I freestyled for 10 minutes straight. The next week, they invited me up to do the radio, to freestyle on the radio, and that's how I got my start in radio. I didn't go to college for journalism and broadcasting. I literally freestyled and built my relationships, and that's what got me in the door to do radio. Okay, good. So, yo, um, let's backtrack a little bit, man. How you, how'd you get your start, period? You know what I mean? You kind of gave us a, a quick, you know what I mean, synopsis of how you got on, but, like, you know, right. talk about, like, you know, the genesis of up, up until the point where you at right now. Man, music has always been in my family. My mother is a, a minister. My grandfather is a minister. So growing up in church and hearing people sing and play instruments, uh, music has always been a part of like who I am as a person. Now, growing up, I ain't listen to Snoop Dogg and NWA like that. Ain't, my mom was a real live preacher. We was getting whooped and going to church on Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. So for okay. me, we grew up listening to like Kirk Franklin and Shirley Caesar, but I always underst understood harmonies and melodies, and you know, I would sneak and listen to the radio station to do whatever. I think the first mm -hmm. rap song I ever heard was uh, Black Sheep. You can get with this, or you can get with that. I, but you know, that was the engine, engine, number, like that was the song that really, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's live. And so yeah. that's when I really started just getting more into the music. I wanna say I, I, I've been freestyling and rapping in school, being funny since like the sixth or seventh grade. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a homeboy named Kiki, his dad let him cuss. Like in the seventh to eighth grade, he had put out an album. They was cussing and everything. I'm like, oh, this is crazy. My mom would never, right? No. <laughs> and so really, that's how I got my start, man, just listening to music. I used to sneak into talent shows. Uh, mm -hmm. I was like 16, going into talent shows and rapping. Here in Houston, they had a club called Just Joking Comedy Club or Club Rhythms on a Monday night. I would go and do these talent shows. That's really how I got my start. I'm not mad at nothing 
via the internet. The internet is amazing. It's a beautiful space, but it's nothing like standing in front of a crowd and people being able to boo you if you suck. Like, yeah. we're like, boo! Like, and they was booing people, man. And I would just come in and freestyle. And that's literally how I got into the music business. Hey, but like going off track, like, all right, I'm not, I'm not referring to you, but like a lot of artists say freestyle, but they spit a written. Like you told me, you going off top for yeah. like ten minutes, off yeah. top. That's a you know, big hole right there. You know what I mean? I, I'm with you. I feel like uh, to me, that's not really freestyling. I understand that by some people's definition, however they claim that. You know, for me, yeah. I literally. And if you actually go look at some of the 106 and Park videos, you will see like that I was really freestyling, like real, like looking at you, getting on your road right now based on what you had on and yeah. how messed up your nose was. And if your nose was like that, like it was crazy, just really yeah. freestyling. And that's really an art. A lot of people don't do it like that. But for me, that's just really how I grind and how I got on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. All right. And you say you want five in a row. So you five. Yeah. yeah. So like, yo, so who who dropped you or did you step down like Jody? Like, yo, I got enough rings. I'm going to step it down. Man, <laughs> like, the final week of 106 in Park, whenever I went, it was the final four. And I went against a guy from Jersey. And mm -hmm. it was just a very unkind crowd, man. And literally, before they start filming, they were like, everybody from Houston, make some noise. Nobody. Crazy. Everybody from Jersey. And it was like, oh. Like, oh, yeah, Home this court advantage, yeah. That, like, yeah, yeah this ain't, ain't going to be my week right here, man. But it definitely taught me a lot, man. It was a great experience, 106 yeah. in Park, uh, yeah. BET, for sure, for sure. So talk about, like, um, some of your inspiration that kind of uh, helped craft your sound. Man, I don't know. You know, like, for me, um, I think I sound like me. I think growing up, you know, I loved the Mysticals. I loved uh, artists like A-Ball and MJG, Scarface. Man, Scarface is one of my top five dead or alive, like just the storytelling oh, ability. Yeah. You know, some people might get mad at me. You you got Biggie and Pac. I was a Biggie person. You know what I'm saying? I definitely wasn't mad at Pac, but I yeah. loved how Biggie told stories. It's like, so for me, mm -hmm. I'm an underdog. I've always dealt with the underdog mentality. I feel like Pac was a hell of a storyteller. I mm -hmm. felt his passion. Pac had a six pack. He was running around this whole sexy doing like this right here, right? So women <laughs> love Pac. Biggie, yeah. lazy eye, fat. But man, you could not deny his talent. No, his delivery's crazy. Yeah. And so for me, I always wanted to be like that kind of artist. So that's why mm -hmm. even now, if you listen to the story of Diamonds and Designer and some of the other music that's from grown man mm -hmm. music, you'll hear the storytelling ability and you'll kind of be like, oh, okay. I see where I see where bro is at. Well, well big up uh rest in peace, Pac, uh rest in peace big, not from Houston, but I rap a lot, pack the yeah. gas a lot, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Yo, I mean, let's talk about the influence of rap a lot. Like, did you connect with them? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even know. Man, what's, like, what's the music look, scene in Houston right now? This crazy. I just had a meeting, and and I don't, I've never even talked about this. I literally yeah. just had a meeting with Jay Prince Jun, Jay Prince, yeah, Baby Jay, which is Jay Prince's youngest son, mm -hmm. and Jay Prince Senior, mm -hmm. about two or three weeks ago. So his son, Baby Jay, is doing music. He has an artist, and I'm glad you asked me. This artist is super talented. His name is Johnny Coco. Anybody listening, Google Johnny Coco. He is crazy. So much love to rap a lot. I literally just sat down and had a meet with him, and I saw Scarface last night at the Houston Rockets game. Shout out my shout out Uncle Face. We call him Uncle Face Mom. Oh, saw word. him last night. So it's always love with rap a lot. Definitely. That's dope. Oh man. Now big up face, man. Big up, you know, the ghetto boys, everybody. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, you know what I mean? Bushwick. So yo, um, I mean, in fact, like going back to rap a lot, like yo. Everybody talk about like the 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 aura of Jay Prince and like you know I don't want to I'm trying I'm trying to find the right word but it's just like I don't know Jay Prince can't get everybody shaking shaking in their boots man is he really like that he's he a real life gangster he a real uh, life gangster you know growing up in Houston I would always hear stories about like Jay Prince it was another street cat named Smitty it was a few other people like yeah. that you met and um, whenever you met them. And just being around them, you could kind of look at and see how certain people move. And Jay Prince mm -hmm. is definitely one of those brothers that that had um, his reputation would, would beat them places. But when you meet him, it definitely was true whenever you would meet him. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I done seen some wild stuff growing up in Houston, brother. I'll just say wow. it like that. Respectfully, I done seen some wild stuff in Houston. <laughs> For sure, man. So, yo, um, what's the response from your hometown? Like when you, you know, you was doing radio doing music, like, you know, when you actually started, like, you know, gravitating towards the music a little bit, like, how have, you know what I mean, Houston received you, you know what I mean? Your it's own, always been time. love. Always oh. been love. So the thing, the thing with me and Houston is this, man. Uh, they know I'm really from the dirt. 
a lot of time you'll have people who will like claim a city or represent a city, but you never have any stories. Yeah. I think majority of people in Houston have a Kiati story, right? Hey man, bro came to my school one time. Hey man, bro was at the club freestyling. Man, I went to a party, they turned it up. Or hey man, we seen bro and them fighting in the, on the beach and got like, they've seen the good, the bad, yeah. the ugly. Yep. They, they didn't miss any of it. And they know like, I'm really from the soil. I'm from the dirt. I got it out the mud. And so here, I always try to help people. I've always been a, a positive brother. I've always grabbed and mentored other young brothers and gave them opportunities and knowledge and information. So here in my city, it's always been love. Every mm -hmm. time, like for real, for real. We are we really about loving on our city and serving the community and giving back to the community in a real way. So definitely it's always been love in the city. I'm not one of the people that's like, man, they used to hate me. And I used, nah, it's always mm -hmm. been love. You know what I'm saying? Hey, yo, how tempted have you been to be on the radio 93.7 to beat? You're like, yo, I'm going to do a whole Kiati hour. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> uh, you you know getting what? the green light like that over there? What's going on? You know what? Man? So, you know, being a radio boss does have advantages. But what yep. I will say, I've only done two one-hour takeovers. The only takeovers that I've ever done for an hour, and this guy to honest truth, one for my little brother, Kevin Gates. Um, Kevin super Gates. duper love. If people go back and do the homework in the history, uh, mm -hmm. Here in Houston, it's a few artists that I really kind of opened the door and, and showed a lot of love to at an early point in their career. So I've only done that two times. One for Kevin Gates and the other was for Nipsey Hussle. Uh, rest in peace to Nipsey. Uh, you'll mm -hmm. also hear Nipsey on Grown Man Music. Our interview that we did mm -hmm. uh, is the, actually the intro and the outro for Never Gave Up, uh, cool. produced by Labbox on the Grown Man Music. The very last song on the album is me and Nipsey's interview. So if you listen to the project, you'll be able to check out The King. And the marathon definitely uh, continues, for real. Yeah, for sure, man. Rest in peace, Nip. I mean, but you you interviewed a whole bunch of big names. You know, Nicki Minaj, you know what I mean? Boozy. You know, talk about what, what was the first, like, big name you interviewed, man? How'd that go down? Like, were you kind of nervous or you had to take a couple shots or something? Knock the nerves off? Like, oh. you know, what was that like, man? <laughs> I'm a class clown. I used to get in trouble for talking. So talking to some of these yeah. athletes and entertainers was easy. I yeah. think my first viral moment was Boosie. Whenever Boosie first got out of jail, he didn't know what the iPhone was. Oh, and man. so I literally taught Boosie, and, the, and it floats around online all the time. I seen on social media millions and millions of views. Uh, I'm, I look different. I had I had locks. And I was well, like, hey, man, can you take a selfie? And Boosie was like, what's a selfie? I'm like, you don't know what a selfie is, man? A selfie is when you – and I'm basically teaching Boosie how to take a selfie. And when you see him now, he can delete it off Instagram and all kind of stuff. So he, I know, he, he can't. what I taught him and went crazy. Yo, it's your fault. He, he can't keep a page for nothing now. He can't drop <laughs> It's my fault, definitely. But it's always love with Boosie Whoa. Badass. Definitely. Whoa, big, up, big up Boosie. We interviewed um uh, JD They got him, man. Boosie artist, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Salute the whole camp, for real. But for sure, um, sure. I don't know. Like, you, you've done a lot of big interviews and all that. And um, yeah. have you ever been starstruck, man? Like, this is your time to actually... You know what I mean? Come clean. You know what I'm saying? Oh, um, not here. You never starstruck with an interview. Cause I need to get some pointers, man. You know, I do the same thing you do. You know, with the radio thing. You know what? I've never been starstruck, but one time I sat right next to Beyonce and I didn't know it was her. So literally, we were at an event for yeah. Congresswoman yeah. Sheila Jackson Lee, mm -hmm. and uh, I was sitting on the back row. It may have been like two or three chairs between me and this lady, and I looked over and I saw the lady. I mean, she was a nice looking lady. She had glasses on or whatever, but. I had no clue it was Beyonce, right? So they ended up talking and doing everything that they're doing. And at the end of the speech, she stands up and, you know, it's like, excuse me. So I back up and I see her. And out of nowhere, I see like these two like bodyguards just pop up out of nowhere, right? And walk past. Yeah. And so, you know, like you see Beyonce on TV and she's going, oh, oh, oh. She wasn't doing none of that. I didn't even know that was her, right? So yeah. literally whenever she walked past, I was like, and I kind of look like Beyonce a little bit, but and then I'm like, <laughs> though it might be a knockoff. <laughs> I'm like, dang, that's Beyonce, right? So I literally was sitting right next to Beyonce, had no clue that was even her. I definitely would have tried to get a drop or something like that. But yeah, oh, man, for me, fine. I'm a people person. I love people. So I just feel like, yeah. especially for you being a dope radio personality, Thanks, bro. most people, when you interview them, just want to have a conversation. They just want somebody to talk to them, man. As long as we talk to people and treat people with respect, I'm like you. I'm not the ambush job. I'm not trying to get on and, man, so I heard you got beat up in the third grade by, like, that's not me, brother. You know, I'm the guy that's like, hey, man, let's talk about family. A lot of people connect you on a personal level whenever you can talk about, man, how is it for me being in the industry, being in a 
a long-term relationship. I've been with my wife 20 years. We were mm -hmm. young, young adults, and we met each other, and we've been thugging ever since. We've been locked yeah. in ever since. Uh, how is it to have to be around, you know, people in the streets? You know, we from the streets, like, straight up, like, you know, it, it's real. And, you know, to be able to transition and be able to be a positive influence when you're in the street environment, these are real things that a lot of us have in common. So for me, yeah. it's just about how can we connect on a personal level whenever we talk. Now, I, feel you. I, I mean, that's my same approach, man. So, you know what I mean? We on the same wavelength right there. And then I got the interview on um, Latavia from the original Destiny chat. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. She was like managing boxes and stuff like that. I thought that was dope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I like one of the funny, like one of the jokes I asked, I like who had the best hands in Destiny chat? And you know what I mean? She said she'll rock all of them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, big up Latavia. That's it, but yeah. Matter of fact, speaking about Houston, man, what's going on? You said you was on the wood with the Rockets, man. What's, when your Rockets going to bounce back, man? Man, I always like to tell people this, man. Right now, our team record is not looking the best. You know, you got you got people that that ride whenever it's good and they dip when it's bad. Me as a person, I'm going to rock when it's bad, man. So when we up, we definitely understand what that feeling feels like and we appreciate those wins. A lot of people don't want to embrace them L's in life. They just want the W's. For yeah. me, man, these are young teenagers, man. Jalen Green, big shout out the homie Jalen Green. Boy, big shout out Green. Oh. Hops. And for me, it's all about embracing them. Now, these are teenagers. Like, you know, basketball is different. People used to have to go through college for two and three and four years. And when they got to the league, they were developed. They was walking around ripped up. They understood oh, man. how to yeah. run their position. Man, a lot of people are not having that experience. They're going from high school straight to the pros. So it takes time for them to develop. You know, LeBron, yes. Jordan, Kobe, all the greats went through an adjustment period whenever they made it to the mm -hmm. NBA. So... Uh, this is the adjustment period. I'm going to love these boys through that adjustment period. But whenever they get right in two or three years, yeah. don't come back. Y'all don't come back on the bandwagon. Stay over there. <laughs> Stay over there with, the, with, with Philly, with Hardy. You know what I'm saying? Y'all won't fall harder, no. man. <laughs> but no, I, I, had to, I, had to, I had to actually, you know what I mean, put that in. Because, like, one of my best friends live in Houston. Big up my boy, Rob. You know what I mean? Our road, man. He live in Houston. You know, he's a huge Rocket fan. You know what I'm saying? What up, Rob? Rob, let me know if you want some tickets to the game. You can come hang out with me. Tell Rob I got him. Ah, uh, Rob Williams, you heard? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's one of my hey, best Rob, friends, I, got him for sure. I bet. Matter of fact, how, how did you link up with um, the Houston Rocket organization? Man, it was my homeboy named T. Gray, the OG, mm -hmm. uh, a radio legend here in Houston. He actually gave me my first air check tapes whenever I started doing radio. He's been with the Rockets for about 20 years. Yeah. This summer, he called me and was like, hey, would you be interested in, you know, working with the Rockets? I'm like, what am I doing? Because he was the DJ, host, everything. So I'm like, man, cool. What Do I, do I need to bring my turntable? He was like, no, nah, just come. And so literally I went and did a drive read. It was probably the shortest audition in the history of the Rockets, but I probably read four sentences and it was like, yo, hey, man. <laughs> hey, we reach out. And they reached out and that's how I definitely uh, got locked in. So one time for my big brother, T. Gray, super producer, super DJ, a real all around stand up guy, got nothing but love for him and his movement uh, maintain that he's building as well. He has artists now that he works with. Uh, shout out Jackson, shout out uh, Nat Boogie, uh, he has his own movement going, so shout out T. Gray. You know his love, big brother, all the time. I appreciate the love. Yeah, for sure. So, yo, um, as far as love with your music, are you are you independent or you sound with a major? Like, no, what's no, your preference? All, all the way independent. For me, um, I definitely understand that the music is shifting and the industry is shifting. So, I always like to tell artists, if you could do it yourself, do it yourself. Tap into those resources that you have and use those resources. And man, it's so easy. Like now, people can get up on a distro kid, a tune core, whatever, and put their own mm -hmm. music out. And if you got the homeboy that shoot the video and you understand online marketing, you can really do most of the work to help build your brand to tell that story. So again, yes. shout out all the independent artists making it happen. Shout out my record label contacts too, man. Much love to Sparta. I appreciate you guys for uh, showing love on this first project. It's always love with me though. Definitely uh, independent, not signed to a, a major record label. Okay. So uh, going back to the radio portion, what was like your most awkward interview? I done, I done had some awkward interviews, man. You gotta give me some, uh, you know what I mean? Most awkward moments being on the radio, man, especially if it's live. Um, two. One was whenever I interviewed a uh, designer, uh, <laughs> and I didn't know nothing the brother was saying. Oh, you just doing ad libs the whole interview? Like, get, get, man, get. <laughs> we had an ice fight, right? He had his jewelry on, and we were like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> we had an ice fight so one time for designer uh that was kind of like i like what are we talking about i had no clue but it probably got the most yeah, alien, yo. it's crazy it was straight we were straight kung fu fighting it was a lot of this <laughs> right boom boom 
And then the second one was Kevin Gates. Um, yes. I had got off and one of my coworkers was coming on, so out of radio courtesy, I said, you know what? Kevin Gates came a little late. You could do the interview mm-hmm. during your show, like showing love to my coworkers. And so the guy may not have been a street cat, and Kevin Gates made a comment about, man, I love Houston. I used to have some IHP in Houston. And the guy had no idea what, what, what Kevin Gates was talking about. So he mm-hmm. said, IHP? And he looks at me, and I just start shaking my head like, no, don't ask what it means live on the <laughs> air. And he was like, well, what does IHP mean? And Kevin Gates yeah. looks and just says, in-house P, and said the word live on the radio, and that was kind of uncomfortable. So yeah. I'm like, oh! So I had to scramble and go hit the dump button. So yeah, yeah, those two are probably like my most standout interviews. Oh, and whenever I, I interviewed Kevin Gates about eating booty, and he was like, yeah, I eat booty. <laughs> Hey man, you know, I love LeBro because of his honesty and you know his his yeah. point of view, you know, you know, some of us may not agree with eating the butt or whatever. That's not my my, my call. It's your call to get your freak on. But again, man, you should never do anything that you're ashamed about people finding out about. If you're ashamed about people finding out something you do, don't do it. Yeah. So yo, I yo, I might I might have to cut this question out, but yo, I saw like uh, um speaking to Kevin Gates, like yo, he jumped mid-air and grabbed his ankles or something like that. Is that a real picture? It oh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a real picture. I don't know how they caught that picture, but, yeah, that is a real picture. Gates he's got hot. Dunk contest this past year, man. He's been working out. He probably could have won. He Work. probably could have won the dunk <laughs> the All-Star. Absolutely. All right, so um, we talk about influence music-wise. Talk about influence radio-wise. You know what I mean? You're juggling both. You know what I mean? Who you look up to uh, from a radio standpoint? Man, I'm going to say this, and it might seem weird to some people, bro. In real life, um. I and I hate I hate comparing myself to like people, but man, I love what Ryan Seacrest is building. I would love oh, to be like the black Ryan Seacrest. Whenever you look at what he's done as far as production company and hosting these shows and producing this content, it's gold level. You know what I'm saying? So for me, right now, uh literally, I have my own production company. Uh I, I have real relationships. Uh I had a crazy conversation today. And I can't really, you know, I can't say with who, but literally talking about producing some content for a legendary R&B group. And uh, my production company will be the company that's filming and producing this content. So love the way that Ryan Seacrest is taking this platform, uh, the on air with Ryan Seacrest and, you know, made it do what it do. So nothing but love for Ryan Seacrest, uh, big boy, a lot of respect for what the Breakfast Club is building. You know, Mm -hmm. for me, it's just about doing that. And then in Houston, the person I look up to most is the Mad Hatter. Um, legend in the Texas Radio Hall of Fame and, and my personal mentor as far as whenever I really started taking radio serious and I'll share this with you because as a personality this might help you he told me hey man you you have all the skills in the world to be the biggest radio personality ever but you got to treat this radio thing like your wife and stop treating it like your girlfriend a lot of us do stuff and we grind and we halfway do it or we do it when we feel like it or you'll come to work and put it in a little bit of work man your wife, you got to love your wife every day, whether you love it or not, whether y'all are having a good time or bad time. I made a promise to you that for sickness, poor, rich or poor, better health, whatever, I'm going to rock and I'm always going to love and hold you down and give you my best. With radio, when you really come to work and you do your show prep and you pull your clips and you start putting things together and you set up, you really got to give it your best if you want to take it and take it next level. Best advice I ever got, much love to Mad Hatter, um, super radio legend, and all around good guy, man. Much love to man. Had a real talk. Yeah, man, for real. And yo, um, just uh, you know what I mean, for our listeners out here, man, Ryan Seacrest, I looked it up while you talk, while you brought his name up. He worth uh reported 450 M's. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man. So, so, all right, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got your jokes about him. He's sitting on 450 M's, dog. You know what I'm saying? So, Big shout out to his team, too. We just had a meet with his team last week. I don't even know if I was supposed to say that or talk about well, that. <laughs> big shout out to his team as well. Is let's yeah, you see. got the exclusive line not too now, y'all. Come on, we're yeah. we, we gonna master manifest. A lot of people may not be up on Kiati's brand right now, but I promise you, in twelve months they're gonna be like, "Oh, that's yeah, we coming." Like, yeah. hey, listen, master manifestation is whenever my will and what I want in life is in line with God's calling on my life. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be right. entertaining, uplifting, creating these positive platforms that people can tap into. These family mm-hmm. brands. Uh, my wife has her own business. My kids have their own businesses. Mm. I'm teaching and walking this entrepreneurial life for real. This music is just another avenue, avenue to connect with people and let them know, hey, man, we got more in common than you think we do. Real talk. So uh, much love to Ryan Seacrest and the team. Uh, 
So yo, um, musically, what was like your first record to kind of take off for you? Uh, it was Garnet, a record. All this attention that you get in there. Has a huge HBCU uh community. Uh, in 2003, I think we did this record called The Hooker Hooker. It was a dance. One time for Texas Southern University, they were the university that took and broke this record. So in 2003, it was Hooker Hooker. It was Chopper Style. Uh, and it may have been like one or two more records that HBCU wise here in the States, it really took off and just kind of gave me like a good footing in the industry. And that probably was like the first record that people really start hearing about me and my brand on. Mm -hmm. So yo, um, Houston, they're known for the screwed up sound. Is it still right. relevant right now? Like are y'all still doing the screwed up music or did it did it shift at any point? You know, screwed up might have been early 2090s, you know what I'm saying? Correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, like today, 2020, like is is uh the screw sound still like uh, relevant out there? Man, somebody just literally hit me two days ago and asked if they could uh slow and chop my record. Mm -hmm. DJ Michael 5000 Watch just went into like the DJ Hall of Fame for being one of the most, you know, respected DJs now. The culture is still alive and well. Some of the younger people may not be tapped into it mm -hmm. as much, but it's definitely still a relevant force. It's definitely still a relevant way for people to break their music and introduce new music because people, this, this is Houston. That's like yeah. saying in DC, will go-go music ever mm -hmm. fall off? No, it's, it's DC. It's just, man, born and bred. Everybody may not jam it as much as they used to, but we always have a love and an appreciation for it because that's a part of our culture and what grew us up. So definitely. Absolutely. And I hate to take this term, but like the Astro Fest, you know what I mean? It was crazy. You know, right. we ain't got into the details. You can just Google that. You know what I'm saying? Like how, how the city been reeling, especially you being on the radio, you know, again, a man on 937, the beat over there in Houston, you know, like talk right. about the effects of the Astro Fest, uh, Fest a little bit, excuse me. Man, you know, as a city, anytime you lose people, regardless of the situation, uh, man, it's a terrible feeling. You know what I'm saying? Nobody mm -hmm. wants to go to a concert and lose their life. For mm -hmm. me, and I will say this, and I've said this publicly on interviews a thousand times, man. I'm not personally holding Travis Scott accountable. At the end of the day, man, Travis Scott didn't do that by himself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, for me, um, nothing can replace those lives, but it's about the healing and not about trying to break a brother down and not allow him to feed his family. This is occupation. Nobody wanted it to go like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, and as a city we were building, uh, I do know that Travis did make an effort to reach out to the families and pay for the funerals and make arrangements for, you know, anything that he may have been liable for, uh, directly or indirectly. And as a man, and as a brand, we got to respect that. You know what I'm saying? There's some people that are in the wrong every day and they will never take any kind of responsibility for anything. So well, the fact that he stepped up to the plate and tried to do that is very admirable. I don't know the ins and outs of the legal cases and the things that are still going on, but just as a city, we definitely recovering and rebuilding, still sending our love and prayers out to the families that were affected by the loss of life and also sending love and prayers out to Travis Scott because as an artist, you never want your fans to get hurt coming out to celebrate and enjoy things with you. Facts. I hear that, man. So, yo, um, I had a crazy question for you, man. I got to look through my notes right now. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, sure. before I do that, upcoming shows, you got any upcoming shows? Did I ask that already? I don't know. Man, so really, man, I'm, and it sounds, this is a terrible, it sounds bad. I'm too busy to do shows right now. Oh, but uh, uh, March the 18th, I'm, I'm finally going to do a, a album release party. Uh, it'll be limited capacity. I think we're going to invite like 200 people out and uh, to a private location. And I'm going to really break bread and show love to, you know, my day one supporter. Whenever I left my last radio station before I came to this station, I couldn't do radio for seven months. God put some amazing supporters around me uh, over that period of time that still woke up every morning when I did my live shows, the AM wake up show. Whenever I would go do events, clubs, anything, they rolled with me and we built a community around that. So we called them my day ones. We're doing yes. this event on the 18th for my day ones, the friends and families to come and celebrate the fact that we put our grown man music uh, together. I always had to do it by myself. We did it together. So we got something coming on March the 18th. That'll be the next show that we have coming up. So speaking about grown man music, you know, what can um the listeners expect? You know, you hear grown man music, so it feel like you got to wear, you know what I mean, a suit, tie, you know what I mean, with, right. you know what I'm saying, some chucks or something, you know what I mean? Like, yo, I, I, talk about that a little bit more in depth. 
So grown man music is about the mentality, man. For me, there's a lot of things that go on in our culture and society that we like to attribute to immature behavior, to boys tripping, being, man, you need to learn how to communicate. They need to learn how to do this and that. Man, for me, the grown man mentality says that, hey, man, we have choices and decisions to make. Yes, I know I probably could go out here and hit this lick. I probably could go out here and fight at the club. But what are the consequences for that? My goal as a grown man is to, one, provide for my family. Two, to love on my wife and kids. And three, be sure I leave a legacy that provides for my family if anything should ever happen to me. I don't want to pass and have to take up uh, uh, collection plates and go fund me. As grown men, we have to set up financial strategies for our family to win. Nobody taught us about financial literacy. Nobody taught us about some of these things in, in my community at a young age. So now with grown man music, let's start having these conversations about, hey man, how do we fix our credit? Hey, what is this crypto and NFT thing going on? before it moves and gets too late and we're late behind. Like, let's keep our people mentally engaged at the place that we are right now so that we're opening our kids to opportunities we weren't open to. Grown man mentality is about, hey man, how can we as a community and as a society really tap in and really get on some high level thinking and some high level acting, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I love the club, I love going out and turning up, but I should love hanging out with my family just as much as I like going to the game, just as much as I like going to the concert. Because being with your family, you're with your family 90% of the time. Why not have the ultimate amount of fun with your family? Why not love on my wife and talking about, hey, man, as a grown man person, we enjoy having sex. Or we enjoy going to the movies in the mall and balling. That's real life. A lot of people out here talking about sex, they not even mad. You know, they just out here uh, uh, everywhere, man. For me, it's about, nah, man, let me love on my wife. Let me, yeah, we're going to do some grown and sexy stuff. For real. So definitely a grown man, you can put on a suit. You could be getting off work, riding around and vibing. It's a lot you could do with that, definitely. All right. So, yo, um, before we get into your records, man, Diamonds and Designer and the story. But, like, I love Houston, man. I went out there, big up my boy, R.O.B.V., man. I got to salute again. You know what I mean? He live, on the, he live on, like, the block Beyonce grew up on, Beyonce and Solange. I don't know the name of the block. But, like, he, and third, he and Third War somewhere. We okay. got him. For sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, that's my brother. But, yeah, um, you got, like, a top five dead or alive in Houston, man? Um, that's always a hard one. Let's go face. Ain't gotta be in, ain't gotta be in order. Just Let's order. go Willie D. Let's go K Reno. Let's go Lil Kiki. And uh mm. and let's go pick big pokey off the top of the head. Th those would be my five. I just those five off the top of my head right now. So yeah, yo, we here with uh Kiati, man. How old body Kiati, man? 93.7, the B out in Houston. Hey, hey um, give everybody your info. Like, you know, if they're outside the Houston area, you know what I mean? They up here where we at. You know what I mean? How can they check out your show? Give some info. Sure. They can check you out. Well, definitely you guys can uh, listen to the show live, 937thebhouston.com. Come on, girl. 937thebhouston.com. If you follow me online, hard body Kiati on everything. YouTube, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Everything is hard body, Kiati. I appreciate the love and the support. Everybody be sure you download, you stream, grown man music. The link is inside my Instagram bio, hard body, K-I-O-T-T-I. -T -T -I. Y'all are going to enjoy the music. It's a very well put together project. When you listen to it, the very first song will make you feel like you're riding through Houston. I promise. You're going to feel like you're rolling through the city and, and enjoying the atmosphere of the H, for real. Word, man. Now, my favorite part of the H, man. Sunday fun day, man. That doing is dope, you know what I mean? Oh, you know, let me find out you was yeah. that now I was out there, you know what I mean? Like, I ran with you, like, was walking out one spot, and I bump into, like, Des Bryant or something like that out there. Like, yeah, the I love Houston, man. Houston's dope, man, for real. You know what I mean? And big up, uh, you know what I mean? 953 Jams, you know what I mean? Online, you know, they syndicate us out there. And, uh, you know, big up 93.7 The Beat. You know, um, you want to talk about the 93.7 um, The Beat real quick before we, you know what I mean, get into your records? Man, so listen, man, one time for everybody in Houston and everybody listening across the globe, 93.7 The Beat, we the big station. You know what I'm saying? The number one urban station in Houston. Big shout out everybody that listens every day. You definitely can download the iHeartRadio app if you search 937 The Beat. Houston, we definitely will pop up. Uh, every night I'm on your radio, 6 to 10. And uh, outside of me, I'll be on some FTS stuff. That's some internal stuff. Shout out Carmen. Carmen Contreras. Where's my drop at? Hold up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Hold up, man. Hold up, man. Hold up, man. Come in. He had to draw that way. 
Shout out Carmen. Two to six. You know, we rocking that way. And my girl, DJ Superstar. We super locked in. So again, man, the Breakfast Club in the morning, Ashley with two E's, then Carmen, then you with me, and then DJ Superstar taking y'all away in the mix. Oh, Mr. Rogers, and then DJ Superstar. So much love, man. 93.7 to B. We outside. So yo, um, hang for a second, but introduce your record, though, man. We're going to start with the Diamonds and Designer record. All right, here we go. Hey, listen, if y'all have ever been in a relationship before, right, and somebody left you and thought that it was going to be sweet on the other side or the grass was greener, Diamonds and Design is about that, man. A lot of time you'll look at the outside and just because it looked the same on the outside don't mean it feel the same on the inside. So that's definitely what Diamonds and Design is about. All right, so we're going to get into it, man. Now I mean, whole body kiyati, man. Thanks for checking in with us, man. Hang back for a second. We're going to get to the record, man. We're going to tap out this interview, man. Yo, we got, we're going to have the double play. We got the uh, Diamonds and the Designer, and then we got the story featuring Trials. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Shout out my little brother, Trials, man. So yeah, we're going to get to it right now. 